Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be talking about all of the tools that I carry with me on my bike at all times. Uh, most of these will not be like specific product reviews, um, partially because I honestly can't remember like what the models are of some of these tools that I have, um, but a few of these will be kind of, yeah, specific to that exact product. Um, find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO115. All right, so first let's just uh, list out all of the different uh, tools that I carry with me and uh, and why I have them, what each of them is good for. Um, so first of all, I have a hex wrench multi-tool. Um, most of the things on a bike that you're going to need to adjust. They use a hex wrench of some size, you know, <laughs> and and that's why I have like this multi-tool that has five different sizes of uh, hex wrench heads and, uh, and it's also got one uh, Phillips head um, because just every once in a while you find something. Um, so for the vast, vast majority of times that I have to just adjust something on the fly on the bike, that's the tool that I reach for, whether it's like moving my seat up or down a little bit, um, whether it is taking the uh, cargo racks and, you know, tightening those up um, or, you know, swapping out water bottle cages or moving things around in that regard. Um, yeah, all of those things use hex wrenches. Uh, now, a few of the items on my bike uh, actually have like like nuts that need to be you know held in place or or you know screwed in um, while or while you're screwing in something else to those nuts. And for that, I use uh, a Leatherman. Um, the Leatherman comes in uh, handy for a lot of other things as well um, because it's just you know generally it's 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 nice to have like a knife with you sometimes and you know the pliers and a, a, a can opener and stuff like that um, so that's kind of more of a general tool it's not it's not entirely bike specific um, and uh, unfortunately when I was um, pulling out all of the the tools from this uh, toolkit I, I found out that I don't know where my Leatherman is so um, we don't have it here to show off I hope that it turns up soon otherwise i'll have to go and buy a new leatherman um so in terms of things that really like go wrong that could break on your bike um the most common item is uh just getting a flat tire right and so uh in order to uh swap out a flat tire i have uh, an inner tube a spare inner tube of the correct size for for my tires uh, I have a couple of tire levers to help me get the the tire on and off of the wheel, uh, and uh, under most circumstances, that's that's all that I need. You know, couple this with the uh, pump that I have. Go and check out the the review uh, of the pump um, that that I use. Uh, link to that is in the show notes here. Um, but uh, yeah. Other than other than those two tools, that's pretty much all that you need to swap out. Um, now, I do carry a patch kit with me as well, just in case, because um, you know if you get two flat tires during one ride, then having one spare inner tube is not going to be enough. Um, but I I don't I don't really trust patches long term. Um, I, I used to, you know, patch up my inner tubes and then keep reusing them. And, you know, if they got a second hole, then I would patch them up again and, you know, keep using them. Um, but I, I found, uh, I ended up having too many of the patches themselves that would fail. And, uh, and then, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're out of luck there. Um, and usually they, they would, uh, run out or they, they, the patches would fail at really inopportune times, um, and uh, you know when when I didn't have any other alternatives with me, um, so yeah, I only use the patch kit in absolute emergencies when I get multiple um, multiple flat tires, uh, you know, 
it before I can go and like grab another inner tube. Um, but for the most part, I rely on having fresh inner tubes. I also have uh, a few tire boots with me, um, which you can think of those as kind of like a patch kit, but for the tire instead of for the um, for the inner tube. Um, I have been told by my bike mechanic that it is definitely a good idea to have tire boots with you at all times because you know if you get um, a, like a something that creates a very very large hole in your tire or if the sidewall of your tire really you know like um, craps out on you then uh, a tire boot is the only thing that's going to help you limp along until you can get to uh you know the next bike shop um i have yet to ever need a tire boot out there in the field um but you know i trust my bike mechanic um i i take it that they are giving me that advice because they have personally been in situations where they found themselves in need of a tire boot but did not have one uh, a Schrader to Presta valve adapter. These things are really neat. Um, so, you know, of course, I like having Presta valves on my inner tubes because uh, it, it, it is the better valve. But uh, when you go somewhere that is not bike focused, like if you go to an auto shop or something like that, right, and you ask for, uh, you know, a, a refill, for a Presta valve, they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? Because they don't know, like, they only use Schrader. Schrader's the only thing that exists on automobiles for the most part. Um, so having this little adapter, you know, you screw one end of it onto the Presta valve of your inner tube. Uh, and then, you know, a, a Schrader pump can just, you know, clamp onto the other end. And, uh, and then you can fill up. And it's great. I also keep a quarter in my uh, toolkit, and that is exclusively so that I can get carts at Aldi when I go grocery shopping. Um, because if I if I did not have this quarter in my toolkit specifically, I would be forgetting to bring a quarter all the time, and uh, and then I would not be able to get a cart. So um, having it in my toolkit just ensures that I always, always, always have a quarter with me when I go to the grocery store. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, uh, I just have a length of string. You never know when it's going to come in handy. Um, you know, just being able to tie things together or secure something onto your bike or, you know, if you've got if you've got something that uh, is like hanging out of one of your bags and you need to tie it in such a way that, so that it won't droop down and like rub against your tire or something like that, you know, string. It's useful. Um, it's a far cry from you know the thirty feet of uh, rope that that everybody should have in their adventurer pack. But um, for me, you know, commuting around the city, touring around on bike, uh, this little length of string um, it does the job for me. All right. So now that we have talked about the things that go into my toolkit, let's talk about how we carry this toolkit right how is it how is this going to attach to our bike um i have tried out several different carrying options and um two out of the three carrying options are ones that i you know will still be using going forward but they're good in different contexts uh and then one of the carrying options i did not like so we'll talk about all three of them here uh first up having a small saddle pack so this is going to be, you know, a, a little, uh, how large are these? These are like half a liter or something like that. Um, you know, just a small saddle pack that mounts underneath your saddle, attaches to the back of your seat post. Um, and it is just about the perfect size for all of the things that I just mentioned that, that I carry with me. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm able to slot everything in pretty nicely there, um, including the Leatherman and everything. And uh, this particular one from Topeak has, uh, you know, a little mesh, like, sleeve, a little, a little mesh pocket in the door itself um, that, you know, I can put the smaller items like the patch kit and my quarter and the 
uh, Schrader to Presta Valve adapter. Those all can go in this little mesh pocket and, uh, and then they won't get lost in the rest of it. And I like using that um, under most circumstances. Um, you know, when you're when, when I'm commuting around in the city, you know, I'm using panniers for most of the uh, cargo that I'm carrying. And then, uh, you know, having that little saddle pack, uh, it's, it's out of the way. It's in a space that is not being, you know, utilized by anything else on my bike. So it's, it's, not, it's not in competition for that space uh, with anything else. So really the only reason that I would not be using this little uh, saddle pack is if I wanted to be using a, a larger saddle pack for packing other stuff. So like if I was going uh, uh, bike packing, you know, and I wanted to have like my Revelate spine lock uh, on, on my bike, by the way, go ahead and click on the link to that review if you want to learn more about the Revelate spine lock. Um, but, you know, I, I, w I wouldn't want to have all of my tools in a large bag like that kind of mucking everything up because, you know, then it, it, it's going to become more difficult to pull those things out at a moment's notice uh, if, if it's, you know, in this larger bag with a bunch of other items. Um, so in those cases, uh, I would use one of these other carrying options. Second carrying option is uh, a little canister that fits into uh, a water bottle cage on your bike. Um, these things are pretty neat. This particular one that I have is like a 16 ounce uh, size. So, you know, you just open that up and it, and it is literally just a plastic, you know, tube um, that you can put stuff in. Um, it uh, It's not quite doesn't have quite as much capacity as the uh, saddle pack that I was just showing off. Um, so I did have to uh, find a different place to keep my Leatherman. Um, and and that's all right, you know, because like the Leatherman is honestly the item out of all of these that I mentioned that is not super bike specific. And I, you know, pull it out for other non-bike related reasons sometimes. Um, but, uh, you know, everything else fits pretty well into this canister. Um, and also the canister has uh, a, a little, a tiny little like compartment that is in the lid itself, and it's got this tiny little cover that screws onto it, and it's just about the perfect size to put a quarter in there. I suppose you might be able to put a patch kit in there instead, um, but I like to, I just put my quarter in there that I have for, for Aldi runs, and, uh, and screw that on, and then, you know, whenever I need to grab that, I don't have to, like, go rummaging around inside the, um, canister itself and you know pull everything else out it's just right there uh on the on the lid now of course because this canister fits into a water bottle cage you know you might be a little bit hesitant to use this because well now you have used up one of the spots where you could have a water bottle so you can't carry as much water um so but i have found that it fits very nicely into my like touring build um because for touring instead of having water bottles in cages uh my my hydration system is having a very large like three liter bladder uh in my frame bag and then, um, you know, just having a hose coming out of the frame bag so that I can drink out of that. Um, so, in so I, I don't have any bottles on my bike at all in the in that case. Uh, and the uh, canister with all the tools, um, you know, I can attach that to the water bottle uh, spot uh, underneath my down tube, which is a spot that I usually don't want to have water bottles in in the first place because you know the tire kind of kicks up a lot of dirt and everything and uh and i just you know I, you don't want to get that onto the valve that you're going to be like you know drinking out of um so usually when i'm like commuting around in the city that uh instead of having a water bottle down there i have my folding lock underneath my down tube um but when i'm touring I'm never really far away from my bike for very long, so I carry a much, much smaller 
lock um, that actually just I can slide it right into my uh, frame bag and I don't bring my folding lock with me at all um, so that down tube spot is is just absolutely perfect for putting uh, this canister of tools into the third carrying option that I have tried out is uh, a top tube bag, like the, the Revelate Jerry Can is the one that I tried out. Um, so this is a, a bag that uh, secures to the top of your top tube and uh, and also you know but it, but it's at the back of the top tube not at like the front in your cockpit area so um, so it would like velcro onto the top tube and then also velcro around uh, your seat post and um, you know in terms of size uh, pretty good you know about pretty comparable to like this the little seat pack that I use um, so I was able to fit everything in there but I didn't really like it because like it it flops around a little bit too much, right? It's difficult to secure something, uh, you know, in that just like 90 degree space in between those two uh, tubes. And uh, so, yeah, it would, it would kind of, you know, lean a little bit left or right and, uh, and it, would, it would end up like hitting my knees when I'm pedaling. And, um, you know, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. So um, I did return that uh, that bag um, so that's why I don't have it here for this review um, but uh, you know you, you might find that um, that that works pretty well for you um, otherwise you know I would recommend sticking with either a, a little saddle pack on under your under your saddle or um, using one of these canisters Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO115. If you would like to discuss this episode with any of the other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can do so at Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.